Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Wife had an affair, but is working on herself. What are the next steps for her marriage? Confused and frustrated. During an argument with my wife at the end of July, she said, Start thinking about divorce. To me, this came out of nowhere, as I thought things had been going well, but later learned by chance that my wife was having an affair. Once I discovered this, I took some time to process this information. Eventually, my wife said, I'm not happy. Let's start taking the first steps towards divorce. At this time, I confronted my wife with the affair, and to my surprise, she had no guilt and justified the affair. She said, I own it. Tell whoever you want. The more I looked into things and she talked, the more I realized she was, is a walkaway wife. I was down and depressed when my wife mentioned divorce. Then went deeper into depression and anxiety when I learned about the affair. Then dipped again to the lowest point when she felt to guilt to the affair and put it on me that we never had an emotional connection after 15 years of marriage. My wife has been a stay-at-home wife for the last five years, taking care of our young kids. And I assumed some of her being down was the pandemic and the stress of taking care of young kids, but have since learned through professional reflection that I missed a number of signs. My wife is firm that she told me the last summer in my office that she wasn't happy, but I never heard that and told her, you told me while I was in my home office working? Over the last couple of weeks, my wife has started therapy on what brought her to the cheating and she continues to work on herself. To her credit, since she started, since she is having more and more guilt about the affair, her therapist is still working with her on what got her to the point of the affair, but hasn't addressed the affair yet. I have also started seeing a therapist for this traumatic life experience. The first session was background on the existing trauma. I feel like the timing of my wife's therapy is off, and she's made herself the priority, not the marriage. Her therapy should have been done before the affair, or during, not now, but better late than never. My wife has said this morning, she wants to focus on herself first, then deal with me. But what do I do in the meantime, being in limbo? I've been spending a lot more time looking into our marriage and my role that I played in not meeting her needs in the affair and have learned a lot. And I'm trying to create a safe space for her so we can start to rebuild that emotional connection. What she is not doing is making any effort to rebuild my trust, but will answer any questions which I have in regard to the affair. This is me asking and making the effort, which as the betrayed spouse, is unfair and probably a sign we're heading toward divorce. I really want to make our marriage work because I want to make it a priority and address her unmet needs, as well as keeping our family together. Am I being selfish asking my wife to make working on our marriage a priority, or am I being selfish? I know her affair was very selfish. Do I give her space and time? Our first reaction comes from, seemed like fun. You, sir, are not listening. I hate cheating and cheaters, and would under no circumstances give anyone a pass. It seems your wife has been communicating a consistent message that you refuse to acknowledge. She checked out on your marriage long before she slept with someone else. When you discovered her infidelity, her message was the same. Now that she's in therapy, same message. You seem to be the only one on the planet that doesn't believe what she's saying. Her therapy is more than likely going to help her rediscover who she was before she was Mrs. Blank, a process she has been on for a while. You seem to want to focus her therapy on what you think the outcome should be. It doesn't work that way. I see her getting her crap together in preparation of doing what she has said, leaving the marriage. If I were you, I'd prepare for that eventuality also. I hate to be so blunt, but you seem tone deaf or obtuse. Update. My ex-wife started an affair on November 2018, which I discovered in August 2020. She had no interest in working on the affair while I did the pick me dance, then learned what the pick me dance was and stopped. She moved out in November 2020, and as of today, is officially dating her affair partner long distance. The issue that I'm having is that I'm struggling with the anger from all of this and losing my kids 50% of the time. My youngest has abandonment issues from missing his mom and my oldest, eight, has increased anxiety. I kept the marital home and have tried to keep things as normal as possible while keeping my anger, sadness, inside and just talking with therapists and friends. Last week, my youngest brought an item from my ex's house which is a trigger for her affair. I texted her not to have my kids bring these over as they are a massive trigger to which she responded, okay, no sorry, but no longer expect that. This morning, she dropped off the kids at my house 20 minutes late and didn't provide an explanation. I called her out on it, but she didn't respond. I then said it again and said, who are you 
who can have an affair which has left me with massive triggers, nightmares, etc., and doesn't even have the respect to tell me she's running 15 minutes late with the kids. She just said, I'm good, so you deal with your stuff. I know deep down this is just the standard for dealing with a narcissist, but my kid saw me slam the front door on her when she said that. I try to set the best example I can, but sometimes I have a setback. With all of this, and with therapy, I have always taken the high road and never said anything bad about my ex to my kids. I haven't even exposed her affair to more than my friends and family for support, and her parents and sister. The fact that my ex-wife is still dating her affair partner and doesn't see the damage she has done to me and my family drives me insane. Each day, I fight the urge to call up her affair partner, his parents, and expose him for the piece of trash he is. He is 39 and single, so he doesn't have a wife to tell. My friends and therapists say, what good will it do? But I keep thinking that I am exposing a cheater that had no respect for me or my family. The fact that it's only a matter of time before the affair partner is introduced to my kids is another story. Any tips outside of working on yourself, working out, hobbies, etc., which we all get as the betrayed spouses, are appreciated. We have a community response from one weight 8383 More importantly, why are you being so vulnerable to her? Why are you repeatedly telling her about your triggers? Don't you see she is deliberately doing these to you? Stop being a doormat and start gray rocking her. Our next thought from True Entertainment 79. Don't talk to her. Don't let her get to you. Don't play into her game. Use one of the co-parenting apps. Beat that absolute gray rock around her. And while you aren't doing the pygmy dance, you're still playing her silly little game and she's reveling in it. Or as people say, she's living rent free in your mind right now. Stop focusing on her or him or anything to do with them. You aren't healing yourself as long as you aren't focusing on you and your children. Work on you, be there for your kids, because this is just tough all around for you and them. Yeah, it's hard at first because of all the unknowns, but start with the basics. She cheated, that's a deal breaker. You didn't break your marriage up, she did. Yeah, you have a lot of work to do because of it, but would you rather be oblivious and happy with her or hurt and happy without her? Get a co-parenting app and make her use it and log every time she's late with the kids, every time she tries to screw with the court orders, keep records, who knows, Maybe she'll be so stupid as to do something that the courts will grant you full custody. But stop giving her the time of day. She isn't worth your time or energy. And never will be. Work on you. Lean on friends, family, and those to support you. You're in therapy, so start listening to your counselor. Don't just go through the motions. Invest in you and their words. Only when you focus on you will you start to heal from this. It gets better. It really does. People in this sub have been there. And we are here to tell you it gets better. And every one of them will tell you the same thing. Only when you focus on you and not her will you start to feel some semblance of happy again. Update. The question I have is, do you expose the affair partner to his family and friends for being a homewrecker and his lack of morals? Every one of my therapists, family, and friends all say to let it go and the relationship will end on its own. But then this man walks away breaking up a family. I know my ex-wife is more at fault, but he had a role to play and told her, Get a divorce. It'll be easier. Are you ready to compartmentalize? Because I'd like to be intimate with you. I keep going back to, these two people had no respect for you or your marriage. I must co-parent with my ex-wife, but I owe this AP nothing. My ex-wife wrote and kept some of her messages, so I would just let the affair partner's family know. This is your son. He broke up a marriage. It's often a trigger which pushes me to expose cheaters But to this point, it's just my ex-wife's immediate family that knows she has cheated. She has controlled the narrative and said, the marriage wasn't working, while neglecting to tell people that she was having an affair first, which is why the marriage wasn't working. We've been divorced for nine months, and I am not interested in working things out with my ex. But this man will have no consequences when this relationship ends. If it does, otherwise, I have to co-parent with my ex and her affair partner, which will be another issue. Always taking the high road, is a daily struggle I am sure most betrayed spouses struggle with. We've got a community reaction from A. Ethan V. This is your son. He broke up a marriage. Your ex and her affair partner will just paint you as the crazy, abusive ex-husband. They'll say the same tired old tropes like, it was a bad marriage that was already over, and the family will accept it without consequence because they don't really care. They just want to believe their family member is good. Cheaters are master gaslighters. You know what the real consequence for the affair partner is? He won an unfaithful woman. We all know how this ends for him. I hope he actually loves her 
and one day when the same old character flaws your ex has refused to change, rear their ugly head and she cheats again. Then his heart will be destroyed. In the meantime, your children and you are the priority. Don't focus on the ex and the affair partner, focus on you. The best revenge is honestly living a great life and becoming apathetic to two crappy people who do not deserve to occupy your headspace. Sorry you are here, mate. Our next thought comes from Coco Nutcake. This, I'm currently in the same position, but pre-divorce finalization. I wanted to come out so bad, but I'm worried if I do anything, it will mess up any settlement. After it's finalized, who knows how I will feel. That being said, my friend did this, confronted the affair partner and her family, and she said it was a terrible idea and just made her feel worse. The affair partner just kept talking about how she must not have been a good wife, good sex partner, etc., which is not true. But even if it was he is the cheater, plus anything the wayward husband had told the affair partner about what he didn't like about his wife, the mom just told her to shut the front door, and she didn't care because her daughter was happy. My friend didn't get any closure and in fact felt significantly worse after it was said and done. They don't care about you anymore and they are both terrible people. You won't make them feel guilt or shame. They are incapable of feeling it. You'll just hurt yourself. The OP replies, I am sorry you're also in this situation. You're right in that people who are in affairs are broken people. My ex-wife's affair partner had no life responsibilities and never had a relationship for longer than six months outside of this affair. If these people did feel guilt or shame, they wouldn't have had the affair in the first place. It's just frustrating. Update. Tips for dealing with a affair partner meeting children for Thanksgiving? My children, under eight, are meeting my ex-wife's affair partner for the first time at Thanksgiving and probably Christmas next month. There's nothing I can do about it, but I can't get over the fact that my ex-wife, cheating is domestic abuse, and her affair partner, who knew she was married with young kids, are going to be around my children. We've been divorced for just under a year, and her affair started two years before that, so she'd been dating her affair partner for three years. To this point, I've always taken the high road, but my ex has taken a toxic situation and made it nuclear. I just don't know what to do outside of doing what's best for the kids. Any tips on dealing with this? Taking the high road is good on the outside, but tears me up inside. Ask for some advice from this community and you're going to get it. Here's some from Plus Gas. From the other side is a 35 year old man whose dad married the woman he cheated on my mums with. Your kids absolutely will process what your wife has done when they're old enough to understand it, and it will almost definitely color their view of their mom as they grow up. My mom was understandably resentful of my dad and showed it all the time. Now I'm older, I get it, but as an eight-year-old kid, I just knew me seeing my dad made my mom sad. So my one piece of advice is just to be kind with your kids. They will understand when they're older. I have a good relationship with my mom these days, but hardly talk to my dad. Tails Duck wanted to chime in. So sorry, OP. The high road is the winning one though. How old are the kids and how much do they know? The OP replies, my kids are both under eight. All they know is that mom had a boyfriend when we were married and that is why we are divorced. Outside of this, we don't really talk about it because they were too young to understand, but I'm sure they know more than I think. Tails Duck comes back with, I see. You can't really do that much on what your ex does though if the kids are not in any danger, then you should talk to a lawyer. Be the best father you possibly can and love your children. Be there for them and answer their questions they might have accordingly. I guess your family and friends know the truth. It can be a good idea to hang on to your support system a bit more during the holidays. Hang in there. Interested in some advice or tips when the affair partner, who I have never met, is around your kids. While she was having her affair, she was open about it to all of her family and friends who even before they were all blocked, would send me messages taunting me and saying how my ex's affair partner was nice. I just block everyone and have continued to take the high road as the damage from the affair and divorce and losing my family destroy me inside, but it gets a little better each day. Anyway, my ex continues to date the affair partner long distance, about a thousand miles or 1600 kilometers away, and they will fly back and forth. I only know because my ex won't call the kids when she's with them. Now, she wants to take the kids with her on a trip to see him this summer. This is an affair partner that I have never met, but my young kids know as mom's boyfriend. He's met them in person once or twice, but the kids under 10 don't talk to me about it and I don't ask. I keep thinking about the moral compass of these people. I have no legal right to prevent this, 
but I'm struggling with this. Struggling with losing my kids 50% of the time and that I have never even met the affair partner. I honestly don't want to, but this person is going to be around my kids. I'm just waiting for the day he shows up unannounced at one of my children's events. I've always been told it will never work out. I know the statistics, but here we are. Do I just continue to wait? I don't really think about it much, but do have these triggers which start a cycle that lasts a few days or weeks to break out of, but I do. Note for the people who have just had their D-Day, I promise it does get better with time, but it does take time. I don't really have a good choice here, but would be interested in hearing some advice or tips on when the affair partner is in your life and around your kids. This OP loves to get advice, so he's in the right place. Here's some from Libertron. The main issue is that you are not over that person. All you can do is be the best father for your kids and make this a complete non-issue for them, i.e. give them the most stable environment as possible. Whatever happens in the life of that person is their responsibility, and all that you can do is put strict boundaries around your emotions regarding their situation. Focus on your healing. Maybe try to use the time the kids are away to focus on yourself and what you want out of life. You are still deeply hurt, rightfully so, and you must focus on your own inner healing, which takes time, but it is the best thing that you will ever do for yourself. Sorry you have to go through this. When kids are involved, things become exponentially more difficult to navigate. Final post from OP. Before D-Day, did any of you notice all the cheating on the show, The Office? Before D-Day, I watched The Office all the time, but stopped after D-Day. I never really noticed Pam having an emotional affair with Jim, Angela cheating on her fiance, Andy, with Dwight, Stanley cheating on his wife, etc. No real point to this outside of Hollywood pushing the agenda that cheating is not so bad. None of these writers, producers, will ever understand what the fallout is from cheating until it's happened to them, and this is just something you have to experience. We've got a reaction from D Reddit Avenger. I just did a rewatch of the show. I will say this, with the cavalier way in which the show deals with cheating, I wouldn't want to be married to one of the writers. I bet at least one of them is in a long-term affair. They wanted to have Jim cheat too, but John Krasinski vetoed that idea. So they settled for the starting of a new company storyline. Don't discount that a lot of people who love cheating are normalizing it through their art. I mean, look at how they allowed the Harvey Weinstein thing to go on for so long. Our next comment comes from I Can Hear You 89. I've started watching The Office like a month after being cheated on, and the flirting of the engaged office manager girl with the sales guy, don't remember their names, triggered me. (laughs) The next comment comes from Sailor Jackin. Before it happened to me, I didn't notice all the cheating in all the TV and movies, especially in supposedly romantic comedies. That is everywhere you look. Our next comment comes from Relkin0716. Unfortunately, music and television and movies normalize cheating. It's really sad. Our next comment comes from LowFMS247. Music is brutal. I never listened to pop music much, but now I hear it and every other song is about cheating and not always in a negative light. Our next comment comes from Schmantasy. The Office, and also Star Trek The Next Generation, has been my post D-Day zone out binge content because it plays nonstop on this one channel. And yeah, I noticed every single instance of it now. It's an upsetting common trope. I have to zone out from the zone out whatever it's mentioned. We've got one final comment from Who's Got Ammo? A whole crappy new world opens up to betrayed friends after getting cheated on. It is mind blowing how many TV shows and movies include cheating. And I think two out of every three songs are about infidelity. I miss being ignorant and being able to be absent-mindedly enjoying these things. 